The Judean Hills rise to a height of 700 meters, affording a view over the lowlands and the Mediterranean coast. In winter and spring, the wooded hillsides are carpeted with colorful flowers. On the slopes of the hills, between the trees, a multitude of habitats shelter a rich and diverse world of wildlife. Next to the ridge, there is a fully operational limestone quarry. Spring 1968. An explosion rings out, a routine blast at the Hard 2 quarry. But this explosion is different from those that came before. It reveals the entrance into a world that had until now been concealed in the depths of the earth. Naturalists hastening to the site are amazed to discover a unique and rare natural wonder. The Sorek Stalactite Cave. Small in size, vast in its scope for imagination. Quarrying work was immediately halted and a few days later, the stalactite cave was declared a nature reserve. The cave was formed many years ago, when the area was close to sea level. The limestone became saturated with groundwater, which dissolved the chalky stone, opening up large caverns. Later, the entire area was pushed up to form a mountain ridge. The entrance to the caves in the area rose to a height of 400 meters above sea level. Rain falling on the hill seeps through cracks in the hard rock, collecting carbon dioxide on its way. As a result, the rainwater becomes acidic and slowly continues to dissolve the limestone, widening the cracks and creating additional underground caverns. Alongside the process of dissolution, a process of sedimentation and crystallation is also taking place inside the cave. Each drop of water trickling down to the ceiling of the cave releases carbon dioxide gas into the cavern. The dissolved particles of limestone sink and form crystals, and each drop leaves behind a minute ring of chalky material. This results in the formation of stalactites in a process that began many years ago and is still continuing to this day. First to be formed are the macaroni stalactites, long hollow tubes that are the diameter of the droplet. The water flows through them like a pipe. When the water drips very slowly, the macaroni stalactites become blocked and the droplets begin to flow over their outer surface, causing sedimentation of the chalk around them and changing their shape. In this way, different shapes are produced from slender stalactites to conical forms, broad at the top, and tapering towards the bottom, and elephant ear walls, or heavy draperies. Wherever there is a drip, a new stalactite may be formed. A stalagmite is produced when a drop of water falls from the ceiling and bursts into many tiny droplets on the floor of the cave. The chalk particles settle on the floor and create a stalagmite, growing ever upward as well as sediments in the form of coral, known as cave coral. The way in which the water drips determines the form of the sedimentation. Stalactites formed from a slow drip are usually smooth and uniform. On the other hand, stalactites that have joined together and cave coral that is settled on the floor of the cave and on the stalagmites come in many shapes. In areas where the water trickling into the cave forms pools, Pool sedimentation also collects. Flowing water leaves sediment behind, called flowstones. And large lactites are commonly found in different directions, as if the force of gravity did not exist. When a stalactite and a stalagmite meet, a column is formed. And a number of columns connected together form walls and halls. The stalactite cave is changing all the time. Stalactites grow, 
mature and sometimes crumble into dust when their source of water dries up. The limestone sedimentation and the construction of diverse forms of cave sedimentation are dependent on carbon dioxide being released from the drops of water, and therefore, the composition of the air in the cave has an effect on the process. People breathe out carbon dioxide, and since the site was opened, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the cave has gone up. The Nature and Parks Authority has installed a system to monitor the climate in the cave and measure its carbon dioxide concentration, relative humidity, and temperature. The monitoring system helps preserve fixed environmental conditions as close as possible to the natural conditions prevailing in the cave before it was opened to the public. In order to protect the treasures of the cave, while also allowing people to visit, the Nature and Parks Authority has created a raised walkway, leading visitors through the main caverns without damaging them. The walkway passes between the halls and does not go through particularly sensitive areas. Among the sites that are not included along the walkway are fossilized skeletons of snakes, pools covered by a fine layer of chalk, and the Mushroom Stalactites Hall. Our stalactite cave is small by comparison with others around the world, but is nonetheless considered a natural wonder of the world because of its vast range of shapes, the density of the stalactites and stalagmites, and the number of internationally published research studies investigating sedimentation in the cave. The Nature and Parks Authority manages the nature reserve, maintaining a fine balance between the needs of the visitors and the need to protect this sensitive cave. Stalactites and stalagmites are unique and protected natural treasures, and it is our responsibility to look after them. Do not touch them at all. Each fingerprint leaves matter on the sedimentation in the cave that harms its future construction. Do not enter the cave with food or chewing gum. Follow the instructions of the guide. If we carefully preserve the natural treasure that has been revealed to us, we will be able to enjoy the beauty of the stalactite cave for many more years to come. The Nature and Parks Authority hopes you enjoy your visit to the cave and invites you to experience nature and our heritage at 500 other nature reserves and natural parks around Israel.